Alliance the whole night. We have any more tools and toys to show off? Anybody want well, to share? Well, I was just going to give you a little background okay. on the yeah. topics. Okay. All right. I, was, I didn't want to interrupt the uh, yeah, go ahead. flow there. Yeah. We can get ba basic, basically, uh, my first exposure to the topics was uh, based on a, a PC Magazine article I read uh, quite a few years ago. PC uh, Magazine? Yeah, PC wow. Magazine. That used to be a yeah. good magazine. It used to be. Yeah. Used to and be. then uh, one of the columnists there was uh, John Dvorak, who <laughs> later uh, ended up uh, being on cable. You know, but uh, that was when he was uh, merely a, a, an article writer. But anyway, um, the uh, he mentioned uh, this bootable disk called Nopix. Well, uh, this is now in uh, version uh, 6.7, because that's the version you got, which is the current version. And uh, basically, uh, the designer, uh, Klaus Nopix, was the guy's name. Uh, an opera, Klaus Nopper. The Nopix. No wonder uh, you like Yeah, yeah there you go. Oh, Klaus. Kindred okay. Soul. Okay. <laughs> well, the concept behind what he was creating was uh, he uh, got tired of the fact that you know people have computers out there, but uh, if he wanted to, he, he realized that if he created a boot disk like this, he could actually make anybody's computer his own. Uh, and uh, in, in, in this sense, he's not actually taking over the computer. But uh, you can boot onto the computer using the Nopix uh, disk. It will work uh, with most computers. There's a CD version, but the DVD version, like when I was scrolling through there, you see there's a lot of a lot more programs that you can squeeze on there. The concept being, he could have the computer that uh, he's used to using, take it to almost anywhere, boot up to it, and save all his data off. Uh, uh, back then it was like a floppy. Uh, now it's onto a, a USB drive. So you essentially can, uh, can use any computer to, to do work. This has a, a version of LibreOffice, which is the uh, uh, newer version of uh, basically what used to be known as OpenOffice. Um, OpenOffice, I, I believe, is still uh, out there, but uh, this is uh, the new incarnation of OpenOffice. So basically, he can do his documents. It's the non-work Right. He, he can uh, he, he get on the internet, he can play lots of games, and uh, if you don't use it for anything other than games, I think you'll find it worth checking out anyway. Does this meet PCI compliancy to run credit cards through because it's not, you know, it's a boot disk? <coughs> Probably. You know, but basically uh, you don't have to uh, put anything on the hard drive, though if you happen to find somebody who uh, has a computer that's useless because they don't have any of their... Uh, <coughs> Uh, install disks. This uh, will do a uh, hard drive install. So it can make a, a computer where you don't have, oh, if, if Nopix will run, if this disk will run like here on the computer and the hardware works, you can install the Nopix on the machine and make it a usable machine. So, but that's basically the value of this thing. This also has uh, diagnostic tools. There used to be some uh, more comprehensive tools and things, but you can check that out. And to get on the internet, you'd have to set the network uh, configuration. If you're uh, for a wireless, on a wired network, it will usually figure its way out onto the internet. And uh, it has a, a, a pretty good... Uh, <coughs> yeah. I, I, used to use, I don't use it much anymore, but I used to use Office all the time for trouble. Uh -huh. And you can watch it. At, I mean, it's great for, for being able to tell if you've got hardware issues on the machine. Right. Because it'll boot up and it, you, know, you can watch it bring up your network card. You can watch it bring up your video card. Sometimes if you can't identify what a card is, you can use an optic to actually identify what the card is. You get the brand if you're trying to get drivers down on it. Um, I mean, it's a it was it's an awesome diagnostic tool. I mean, just a right here you go. It, it gives you a uh, a rundown of your network uh, situation also. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's it's just basically you've got a, a computer where the hard drive's trash, and we'll see if the computer's worth uh, you know saving. You can check this out. You can also do some hard drive diagnostics yeah. and things like that. Though I think it uh, starts out in some type of protected mode, so you can uh, tell it, you know, to allow you to make changes. But it doesn't automatically allow you to make changes onto your hard drive. So, but anyway, I just thought for anybody that was interested, to, it was just sort of like a little something I could do then. It's, it's not helpful if the CD-ROM driver or DVD drive is bad. Correct. So, but, but, but then, well, that's so brilliant. But, but now, on the other hand, if this if this thing won't, uh, yeah, yeah, if this thing uh, won't do it, yeah, then, then you'll know you'll have to replace that before you can go to the other. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, that just gives you a little idea of the theory behind it. You get one of those little USB caddy things. Oh, wait, 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 now, wait. When I was using optics, there was no such thing as USB, so sorry. <laughs> You're that old. The fact there was no such thing as DVD drive at that point. He's on. But just uh, go ahead and play around with it. Uh, if you don't want to boot your computer on it directly, you can run it in a virtual box. So it, uh, it works uh, very nicely. So what is it you use it for? Myself? Yeah. Games. Games. Okay. So they... And besides, it's just, it's just a curiosity mostly. Okay. Oh, I just well, talked to you. No, you don't touch this computer. But anyway, uh, I think. Uh, whoops. Um, is anybody using um, or been using the Microsoft's like new boot uh, cleaner for cleaning off viruses? Yes. yes. Um, I, I, since we're talking about technology, I kind of thought of something to boot up with. I was using it in the is it Connect the online like beta testing stuff. Um, I had been using it then, and now that I don't know if it's still, it's not in the Connect area. They actually have a site for it. I don't know if it's beta still or not. It's still beta. Okay. But it's live for Microsoft support. So when you go to the, the site, you, know, you Google the beta, it takes you to the Microsoft support site. You've been directed here by Microsoft support. That's the way it starts out now to download. And blah, 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 create this disk. Yeah, it'll create a boot disk or a boot uh, USB stick in case you've got a bad DVD drive, and it will boot in <laughs> and do the. No DVD or not. Yeah. Or no DVD, yeah, with, with any of the devices that you have today. It's, yeah. it's actually pretty cool. It works really well. Um, I have ERD well, Commander, so it does the same thing, uh, but if you don't have ERD Commander, this is a yeah, great. It's Brad. Brad's Frank and Google. Yeah, it's Brad. <laughs> I, it's found things that I've run five or six other uh, uh, programs Tools. trying to find, trying to find by then. what's going yeah. on, yeah. and it was the only one that would detect a root kit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I sat there for <clears throat> half an hour and finally said, no, nope, I can't clean it. Have you guys ever done the fix MBR, fix the master boot record? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, a long time ago, yeah. yeah. Okay, but well, I mean, that's what I always got around for, though, because if you run that, if you run that I can't remember. I mean, on the Windows 7, you have to get a recovery mode, which is not in the OEM. You have to add that into it. Yeah. But the if you if you run the NBR, I mean, you can check you can check to see if the NBR is correct, and they'll tell you right there you got it in it. If you're successful at fixing the NBR without traction, I use TDS Killer, which is Kaspersky, to find rootkits. It works really well. Kaspersky didn't find what this. One oh, really? Hmm. So I use like that, malware bytes, the safety scanner, and a couple other stuff. Yeah, I've, I've did them where they didn't find the root kits either that were there. I don't remember the site, but I know Steve Gibson it. Even reinstalled it, it just so. reinstalls the root kit. GRC. <laughs> well, I meant like the site for the, the link to the Microsoft. Wow. Oh. So. Yeah, there, there's another uh, cute little thing uh, that's a scanner uh, by a company it's called any Microsoft Offline System Sweeper. Okay. Safety Sweeper. You guys uh, ever see this, um, this thing in action? Yes. Okay. Since we got time, I, I purposely did not bring a lot of stuff because I didn't know how many people would be bringing stuff. You only had so much space in your car. That's uh, uh, Corolla can't hold a lot. There's a reason for that. That's not it. Like the deer doesn't even fit in it. All right, so I need the cable when you're, are you in the middle of this? Uh, let me see if I can find this site real quick. Okay. Here it is. That's the malicious software. Yeah. Yeah. That'll look good some. Type, type offline. Well, so you have to Google, sweeper. you can't find a bean. Sweeper? Sweeper. <laughs> Beta. There it is. There it is. Yeah, because it used to be on the Connect site. It still yeah, is. The, well, but they actually. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the top. Thank you for contacting yeah. Microsoft Support. So they're using yeah. it. Yeah. Well, they actually have it on a regular Microsoft site now. I'll have to find it instead of so you don't have to have the Connect login. They actually had a regular page. Yeah, you're not even signed in. Look, look at the top. Yeah, yeah. that's true. You're, you're not signed, signed in. in. You're not signed in. You they made that a public site, basically. Well, that, that page. Well, that, yeah, they have a nice. But this tool works really well. So I'll post the, the good the actual link to it. It creates 
you, when you click on that, it downloads a tool and then it goes and gets the rest of the, the updates and brings down a, a fresh copy with the definitions. What's your okay. model number? I, I sent it out already. Oh. If you wanted to, you can have it. It's a direct link to it. Okay, and then so you gave them out and I turned my nose to it. So I'm going to boot it in hard drive <laughs> mode so you guys can see what it looks like first. The games so what? You know, yeah. If you don't do anything else, I find the kids love the games. You know, like, <laughs> All right. So, so you'll notice it's, it's, I called it ISO drive. I chose that name. Internet. Yeah, it's a wire connection. But a wire that's connection. the name you have to call the directory. It's, it's in the instructions. Underscore ISO. And there's all my ISOs. So All right. Booting from this, how do you just choose which ISO you want? That's that's this, that's what this wheel's for on the side. The wheel. Okay. So the next thing you do is you unplug it, turns it off, hold the push the button up, plug it back in, it boots up, and then, then it starts showing me the list of those files on this little screen. So let me boot up. I even renamed them so they're easier to read. Uh, because it's, two li it's a two-line display. Okay, let me try this one and see if I can get, the, get this to show up. You push the button in, and then there it is. So now that shows up as a, as a bootable ISO. Looks like a CD-ROM to the OS. Look, boot it up. That's a bootable image. Make it boot. I have to shut down and restart the laptop, but I can do that if you guys want to. Sure. I don't know if it'll show the laptop. laptop. We, we can try. It may not work. You have that backed up on home server, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it works. And the good part is, as long as they don't remove the power. It keeps this ISO locked on here until I remove power. Cool. And I've never booted this particular one, so we ought to see how this works. And I'm not sure if I have... Probably up to 12. Probably, yeah. So what I did is I downloaded the Windows Thin PC ISO, which you get only with software assurance. That way you can make your own thin clients out of an old PC. And I'm curious. That was like boot device options. USB CD ROM. Press any key. And you guys can't see it. Right. Well, what happened on the Nopics, they had to load the uh, driver for the video yeah. in before you could see it. There we go. Uh, hit the keys on the laptop. Mine didn't. Mine wouldn't do it. This is the I tried it, the function F, yeah, to push it out. So this is Windows 10 PC. I saw. Is it I recall? Was it Dell who was talking about a customer when they were remoting? They were typing in and the characters weren't matching. I think it was Dale. Was that? Did they ever come up with? Did that ever resolve? Yeah, the keyboard was in English. I know. <laughs> well, Probably. There you go. So there we go. So like I said, I've seen some BIOSes that don't see this right. Um, so far, and I've seen the smart start from HP not see this right. But uh, that's pretty small. I'm still testing. It's fine. Like, I've got a HP HP so well. one ten G7 up on my workbench that I'm going to try to pick with directly from this versus using smart start. Let's look at it for so, a yeah, New egg. Soul out. Soul out? Yeah. yeah. This is a free download. Yeah. Currently out of stock. Yeah. It may not be restocked. <laughs> it might be an old box. I'd like to see what USB is. You can either have a CD or you can, uh, if you have a, yeah. if you want to remove the hard drives from an old computer, and if there is um, onboard USB, 300 miles. USB ports, some of them have an onboard USB port, like some of the uh, HP, or they'll open up, there's actually a USB port inside, 
or you can get an adapter yeah. and just not mount it on the outside. Just leave it laying inside the case, plug uh, like a two gig flash into it, and then you can load this on there. Okay. Where? And just have a goof for that. And then all this is is this is essentially a Windows embedded product that you get to use as a benefit of software sharing. So instead of going to buy thin clients, you recycle your old PCs until they physically die. And this is a way yeah, to I can do that. I can do any day that's available. So multi point stations. Uh, yeah, yeah, server stations. A remote desktop server, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that's it. So I, I actually uh, it was at a conference. Yeah. Paul and I did uh, about yeah, a month ago. Go. It was up in Columbus. Who cares about? It? And I don't think anybody else from our group is up there. But um, they give you a chance to buy one place selling it. Uh, Intel hardware, one quantity of one. You get to buy one desktop board and processor. One server board, processor, and RAID control. USB 3.0. And then this time they offered a thin, small form factor uh, $65. device. $65. Like motherboard, processor, oh, cooling solution, and a case for it that looks like the stand for one of these monitors. The PC actually is installed in the base. <laughs> and it has the monitor arm. And then there's no monitor you put what you want on it. I'm still waiting on that case to arrive. But my intention was to take that, install it on a flash drive, put it all inside the monitor case, the base, and then just throw a monitor on it. And use it as a thin client and see how well it works. Because this should support remote FX with the appropriate video card. And I should be able to use this with multi-point or terminal server. And I was hoping that the case would come in so I could bring it in and show it to you guys, but yeah, it's not here yet. That's the only piece it has not So as soon as it does, I'll bring it in. We'll show it, we'll show it off. But, um, anybody, so, are, you, are, you, are you still using multipoint? Yeah. Is anybody else using multipoint besides us two? Let me, let me give you guys I a tip. I have one that I'm having problems with, but I think Kevin coming out on my area. Yeah. I, I, have I think I'm going to do one. <laughs> True server video cards suck. Balls, as that kid said. Yeah, yeah. So you need to put, <laughs> yes. you need to put true video cards in. So, yeah. But um, we showed this website off over a year ago. Uh, and I, I, I looked the URL up, I went to reboot, just put the URL, bring the URL up. Um, I this. Yeah, Alan, you said you were going to put one in? Um, yeah, I think I got an application for one. I'm using it for foreign language support at schools because uh, we, else we have to edit every PC and put all the foreign language are, stuff on it. Are you running in VMware environment? You're, you're running multi-point in VMware? Yep. The only so, problem is so the video use... card really makes a difference, right? It does. It does. Okay. I mean, mine works, but we're not using it to do any high-end video. Uh -huh. It works. It's decent, but if you put it on a PC that has a good video card, it's much better much faster. But I'm using it in two education environments, right? actually three now, and all of them are running off ESX. And we use them to, one of them is more like for remote access in for the teachers, uh, as a terminal server. Oh, that's cute. Oh. And the other one is a is for a multi like, foreign language stuff. Oh. So. He's a pussy cat. I've got one, there's a bunch of machines running on this VMware uh, server. Uh, and I've got I get to a certain point when I have like the fifth station, everybody just goes black. Get your video card. Yeah. I haven't Remember had that site? problem. How big I'm is the ESX yeah, box? Yeah. Use this guy when you're installing software on multipoint. Pull all your installs down from here. Okay. Because it uses the administrative install, does it as an MSI versus <coughs> like here's the example, the multipoint I set up, they use Flash and Adobe Reader. That's one of their, some of the requirements. <laughs> so to install Adobe Flash, normally if you do the web install, it brings down an installer. Well, the way Multipoint works, it has a special user that runs and you, you can't ever see it. And the GUI goes to that session. Right. And you can't see it. So you can't install Flash or Shockwave or anything that uses that web installer because the, you can't get to dialog. The only way to install it is to sign up to be a distributor or installer and you get the MSI files which are require no UI. And you also get all the extra crap where that comes with them. Which is that that's another cool thing. This guy does that for you. He repackages all that 
as a single MSI that installs all the products you select. Well, it works not. very well for multipoint. It also works for terminal server as well. Yeah. Eric, how big is your ESX what is box? That? Is it uh, 39 NIT? Uh, terabyte. Uh, is it a two, single? Two quad core processor. It's not in a cluster, though? It's not in a cluster. Yeah. Mine are running on, both my installs are running on HP DL380 G6s with 72 gigs of RAM and 16 processors. Uh, so, <coughs> and I'm not having any problems with it. I can have like well, 20 no. students. Uh, you got a decent video card? And they each get four processors. Well, yeah, but and it's it's clustered, so there's three of those. But repeated. Uh, those of you running want to want to run multipoint under Hyper-V. If you're running under Hyper-V 2008 R2, which is the full server, not just the bootable Hyper-V host only, um, that you can add remote sense. FX support to virtual machines. It's added as of 2008 R2 with SP1. You have to go and add the role to the Hyper-V host, and it doesn't violate the license agreement. You can do that. And then all the, all the virtual machines. I feel virtual, violated just running Hyper-V. Multi-point allows remote effects. 